Cajun stage, the most important term you're going to need to know if you want to sell your home in the next month. I'm Brian Murray, and welcome to The Brian Murray Show, a real estate show, New Jersey style. Today's discussion point is about how are you going to sell your home in the next 30 days. We're right now at the beginning of October in the Hoboken, Jersey City, New York metro market. This is a very transitional month. This is the month that separates the fall selling season from the holiday season. Once we hit November, we are now in the holiday season. So if you are a seller and you're wanting to sell your home in the next 30 days, 40 days before the holiday season, your number one term that you need to know is cage and stage. Meaning, number one, go out and get yourself a storage unit. Get yourself a cage. Take most everything you own. Get a big one. Don't splurge. Get the biggest one you can get. Get two. Take most things and put them in the storage unit. And then stage. So one, you're going to take out most of your stuff. Even if you have really nice stuff, you're going to leave it bare bones. That's down to like the leather couch and the really modern furniture and like a couple of paintings. And that's what I come and I do. As I help you pick out this, this, not that. Nearly everything out of your closets. I know it's going to be sweater weather very soon, but almost nothing else. If you've got 500 pairs of shoes in your closet, you're going to have five pairs of shoes in your closet. If you've got 42 belts, you're going to have four belts. Get what I'm saying here? If you have 12 jackets, you're going to have one jacket. Get used to wearing that same jacket over and over and over and over and over again. And over and over and over again. So you get your home sold. Then you can bring it all back. Cage and stage. So the number one thing you need to do is remove everything and stage immediately. Because you have a very, very short window. Otherwise, you are looking at price reductions. And you're looking at carrying it through the holiday season. That's just the fact of the matter. I'm going to get into the market numbers right now that are going to talk a little bit more about why it's really, really important to go the extra mile right now, more so than any other time of the year, to get your home ready to get it staged, to get it sold right now. Look, by the time you get to November, December, if you have outdoor space, this is the time. November, people aren't going to want to stand outside. They can't project what it's like to have your outdoor space in April and May and June and July and August and September and October. They can't project it in November and December. All they say, it's cold out. It's really cold out. It's getting colder. It's snow covered. It's miserable. The view is miserable. There's no green. It's all white. It's all gray. Now is the time. Stage it. Get some mums. Get some other things. Get some pumpkins. Go out there. We're going to stage it and we're going to cage it. So if you want to get your home sold here in October, that's number one on the list. This is today's discussion point. Okay, let's take a look at today's weekly market report, September 28th, 2021. Available Hoboken 202, Jersey City 190. Under contract in the last 30 days, 76 in Hoboken, 60 in Jersey City. So you're sitting there about three months of inventory, plus or minus, in both markets. That's a fairly strong seller's market. In Hoboken, you have about 90 homes that have been on the market for more than 30 days, and in Jersey City, about the same, just about 90 homes. So there are some homes that are starting to get a little bit shop worn out there. Or maybe they're been on the market for a while. Maybe they're new construction. Maybe their pricing has been a little bit aggressive. Maybe they don't show particularly well. Maybe, 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 right? The location, there's a lot of other choices. There are only three things that a home comes down to. Price condition, location. That's it. Those three things. Price, condition, location. If the home's not selling in 30 days and for Hoboken, say the average days on market of those under contract is 32, the median days is 17, or Jersey City where the average is 49 that the median is 31. If you haven't sold in the first 30 days, price, condition, location. Now, when you're selling, you can only change two of those things. You can't make the home move unless you have a mobile home, and I don't see too many of those. So let's take that one off the table. Price, condition. What is the easiest one to do? Yeah, you could put a new kitchen or a new bath or a new floor in your home. What is that going to take? How many weeks? How many months? How much money? How much aggravation? So that's the market there. The solds in the last 30 days, uh, 69 in Hoboken, 45 in Jersey City. Average uh, list to sale price, 98.8% Hoboken, 98.4% Jersey City. No surprise on that. But this is the OMG report. I promised you the OMG report. And here's where it is at. 
look, you have a confluence of factors right now. You have things happening with the Fed and tapering, which is leading a lot of analysts to say, hey, guess what? Expect the interest rates to start rising shortly. So, okay, and he even talked about it on my Mortgage Monday show with uh, Joe Berg from Pinnacle Mortgage. Rates are already, you're not gonna see too many, you know, twos are gone now. You're at three, rates are rising. Still good rates, but rates are rising. You know, you got a buyer's problem here where you know it's gonna cost you more for your home if you don't get in. The longer you wait, the higher the rate. And secondly, it's OMG from the holiday season, which I talked about in the earlier segment. You have a compressed window here before we hit the holiday season. So now sellers wanna sell and buyers wanna buy. Buyers wanna get those interest rates while they can and sellers wanna sell while they can. That is making a bit of an equilibrium, right? Who's gonna blink first? You know, some people are gonna sell because they have good homes that have good location, good condition at a reasonable price and buyers are buying those as you can see. Or you're gonna wait as a seller and you're gonna find yourself hey, and now I'm 30 plus days on the market. But guess what? If we're sitting from today, 30 plus days on the market, in another 30 days from now, you're at the end of the season. You know, there's very little that can be done for you at that point other than hope that the right buyer comes through or again, condition price reduction. Or you wait and you wait and you wait and you wait. But as the interest rates go up, all your value goes away anyway. So OMG, these are the weekly market numbers. September 28th, 2021. The good, the bad, the ugly. But before I get to the good, the bad, the ugly, which today is really gonna be the be the good, the better, the best, I'm gonna give you the inspirational quote to overlay. Typically we do it at the end, today I'm gonna to do it at the beginning from Winston Churchill. It says, I'm always ready to learn, although I do not always like being taught. Well, today we're gonna we're gonna teach you something. There was just uh, an article out about these i buyers or these these big companies they go out and they buy a whole bunch of homes usually for cash they're well capitalized bigger companies you might recognize uh, one of the real estate companies it rhymes with pillow uh, so what they'll do is they'll go into a market and they'll buy a whole bunch of homes up and then they'll rent them out okay so they probably buy them at somewhat of a discount and then they rent them out they're buying them cash blah 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 interesting thing about the article is they were talking about how they were kind of putting a negative spin on it about how they would buy like say 30 homes in a market uh, X, $100,000. And then they would buy a couple of them over the market price, maybe 115 or 120. That really set the new comps. It pushed the whole market up. Now for that company, they own 30, 50, 100 homes at, that they bought at 100. Well, now with the valuations on the last comps, they're at 120. So the thing the article was talking about is that's really making it difficult for those buyers out there that are trying to compete with them because maybe they, they don't have 120 to buy the home. So that's an interesting thought. I mean, I think for the company, it's really an interesting position. Not so much that their valuation is higher, but I think what they can do then is package a refi or some sort of financing package where they could probably take all of their money off the table and just have the, you know, the 20% that the new valuation is as their collateral. It's kind of ingenious. But what it does is it provides liquidity to the market. So the, these I buyers or these pillow buyers, what they're doing is they're basically buying up homes and so there's always homes coming off the market and there's always data points. The better is that, you know, if you have a home in this market and you waited, well, now your home's worth 120. So you benefit from pillow raising the market. Not too bad. You're a winner there. And then the best part of it is that imagine if they did it the other way in a really nefarious way where they didn't, you know, what they did is they bought up a few homes, five, seven homes. And then through their shell company, they sold those homes at a 20% discount and they depressed the market because there were enough comps that it depressed the market. Now all those sellers that are coming in are getting 20% less because of this. And let's say the I buyer comes in and then they buy up all these homes at 20% less. So then the sellers are actually losing. So that's probably the best that they didn't come up with a model that really hurt a lot of people. It did make them some money, but it didn't hurt people like they could have done it the other way around. Just uh, some food for thought. Thank you so much for watching The Brian Murray Show. I really do appreciate it. As always, all episodes of The Brian Murray Show can be found on at the Murray Property Group under the blog section. Please like me, share me, LinkedIn, Google My Business. I love reviews on Google My Business. Facebook is another great place for me. You know, find me anywhere. You can probably, YouTube, I'm everywhere. Please 
like me, share me. Weekly reports are always there. Uh, I do appreciate all of your feedback, all of your comments. And again, if there's anything that you disagree with, reach out to me directly and I'll show you why you're wrong. Thanks for watching.